Hello and welcome back. I'm John Tandy. In the previous video, we took a Pro Tools session and via AAF opened it in Studio One for mix and for use in a short music video. Sync in this situation is straight ahead. It's a single audio file. The film has a rough mix as reference audio, so lining up the two is pretty straightforward. Now in this video, let's get into a slightly deeper situation. We're going to set up a mock session in Studio One that will include a movie for which we will scatter around sound effects. Now Premiere Pro has an automatable software software mixer and it's actually very good but sound design is something you definitely want to do in a solid audio workstation specifically to take advantage of things like software synths uh, time stretch sampling stereo busing uh, etc and for me that workstation is Presonus Studio One so my good friend and comedy partner Dan DePaola stopped by we ad-libbed some slapstick gags for which we will create sounds in Studio One which will then be exported via AAF for use in Premiere Pro Okay, we've shot our video and we uh, ran off a rough cut, just enough to go through it and set up some sound effects and place them accordingly. So first thing we're going to do now in Studio One is create a new song. Okay, new folder, and we're going to call this uh, Slaps at Bar um, SFX Session. All right, so we're going to save that folder. Okay, our sample rate we know is 48K and our resolution is 24 bit. We uh, made those settings in the camera, so I know that it's that. Now, there's no frame rate here, there's no time code. We're going to set that in the session uh, in the song setup. So let's create the song. And right now it's an empty song. First thing we're going to do is go to the song setup. And we're just going to double check everything. Okay, 48, 24. Now, I don't know why it defaults to 25 frames per second. Uh, uh, Personas is in New Orleans and this is the United States so when you set up your frame rate maybe there's a preference I don't know double triple check your frame rate and make sure it's correct in my case it's 23976 I'm telling you again in this video it's not likely to be 24 this is not sprocketed film this is a computer the way to make sure is to open up the original footage in QuickTime and get information on it, and it will tell you what, this, what the frame rate is. And this is uh, what I have confirmed to be 23.976. Okay, enough on that. Now, here's what we're going to do. We are going to open up our video window, our video player, because we want to import our rough cut. So we're going to click on the plus button, and here is our rough cut. When you open up your video player screen, it's always too big. That's another thing. And getting to that tool sometimes is below the uh, horizon. We're going to go to half size. All right. Next thing we're going to do. First of all, we're going to look at our rough cut and make sure we have what we... Yes. Okay. Yeah, don't eat any more nuts, please. Don't eat any more nuts, please. Okay. So let's mute this. And we are going to extract the audio. Here's the reason why. Do you want to extract the audio to a new track? All that's on this track, there are two things, dialogue, and at the very beginning, and this is important, let me make this bigger, at the very beginning, you have to have what we call uh, a slate uh, in uh, TV, sometimes they call it a two-pop. It's, uh, uh, it's just a sine wave, and it's a very quick one. Let's play it. When you do your audio, that's what your editor is going to look for. In this case, you are the editor. So copy that to a separate track and include it with your AAF export. This way, if there was a time code miscommunication, you can still visually line things up. Okay, getting back to this. Now, the audio hasn't actually been extracted. It's still embedded in the original movie file. The audio, however, has been exported uh, as a separate file. Now, compare the two, and there's a reason for this. You see, it's just a little off at 24 frames per second. It's not like 60. There are a lot less frames uh, within a second of, uh, of, of footage. And I find that generally, and this isn't just, this isn't personas. This is in general. When you're taking the audio and bringing it into an audio workstation, you're going to be off by about six tenths of one frame. So that is about a quarter of a frame. So 24 frames per second, do the math. It's about a, um, you know, five one hundredths of a second. Maybe there's some slight processor delay with the extraction. Again, another reason why the pop is so important. But play with those numbers. It's really very, very small. So now let's get to this footage. Let's look at the picture and let's see what we have to do. What are you doing? I'm cracking nuts. You... Hear that little flange? I forgot to mute the audio on the rough cut. What are you doing? 
I'm cracking nuts. You're, dent you're putting marks in the bar. Again, the reason why I'm doing this in Studio One is because sound design in Premiere is just not practical. I need time stretch, sample one, etc. Here's a sound effect that I know is going to be a little goofy for me. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, I have to make a saw sound, a wood saw sound. Even though it's a hacksaw, sawing wood would be much funnier. So what I did was I took a piece of wood and ran a saw over it. And let's get it. It's right here. Let's just bring it in to about that spot. It will automatically create a new track. We know this in advance. Now, here's where we have to think a minute. Let me get down here. Let me get this out of the way. And let me just solo this track. I need a push and a pull. Easy enough. Here's what we're going to do. Let me make this a little bigger. Let's get these two and get rid of all the rest. Now, here's what we're going to do. Let's separate the push and the pull. Okay, we know we got to push somewhere around here. Now we need to look at the picture. And there's your pull, starting there. Let's get our razor blade and cut this there. And now we got to look and see where he goes in the other direction. Now I'm going to lay these out and I'll show you what we're going to do. This is going to be so easy. Now I'm going to copy this. And then we got to see where he goes in the other direction, right about there. Okay, now of course these aren't going to sound right because they're too short, but Obviously, we can stretch the audio. Okay, so let's take a look and see if it's kind of in the ballpark. One more. Okay, good. Now, here's the easy part. What we have to do at this point is... Now, it's not going to be the best audio quality, but remember, it's a saw. So it doesn't sound that great anyway. Also, I recorded this out outside with a zoom. So all I'm doing now is I'm pressing the option key and just dragging the end of it over to time stretch it. It couldn't be easier. And then when we're done, it should be very close. Let's take a look. Now, you do hear some uh, audio loss, but with him screaming in the background, <laughs> I think we'll be fine. <laughs> and by the way, if you're thinking of trying this at home, this is a real hacksaw, but we turn the blade upside down so that the teeth are on the inside. Then we put three layers of duct tape on the smooth side. Uh, and while it seems safe enough for the nose, if you get a little reckless, someone could lose a tooth. So now I'm going to do each sound effect one by one, and then I'll come back and show you what the next step is. Okay, we're back. We laid out all the sound effects in Studio One, and they're in their proper place. We also added a music track. Some of these sounds are pretty gritty after we manipulated them the way we did, and uh, the music underneath uh, helps to disguise that. So let's see what we got here. We also have the dialogue track. Uh, there is a dialogue track in Premiere. We don't need it anymore, and we should remove this stuff because... Uh, it'll just keep things that much more organized when you get to the other side. Of course, save this first as a copy before you start removing things. All right, now let's take a look at some of these sound effects. Uh, hitting uh, the nuts on the bar. And with the music, it really does help. Okay, you get the idea. Okay, so we're going to prepare this for export. So let's now uh, save as. We're going to save it as an AAF. We have to adjust our settings to make sure it is compatible with Premiere. When you're with Premiere, do not embed the audio, okay? You're, you're going to have to make sure it's not embedded. Split stereo tracks, convert stereo tracks, and mono pairs. Okay, here's where you have to be very careful. Now, you can import a non-embedded AAF into Premiere that has stereo files. However, on import to Premiere, those stereo files will appear as a mono sum in your sequence. It's actually just one side of the image because Premiere does not support import of stereo files via AAF. It doesn't reject them. It just only uses one side of the image. So if you need to retain a stereo image, export a split stereo. In my case, I recorded these sounds in my garage with a zoom, and the sound effects are going to wind up being mono anyway, so there's no need for me to have all those split stereo tracks in my sequence. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. Um, now what we're going to do here 
is we're going to convert to AIF, we're going to convert to 24, and we're going to convert to 48. And the reason why we want to convert is this way it'll just rewrite the files to its own folder. It's not a lot of data. Trim audio files, yes, there are no heads or tails anyway. I just keep that chosen. Export pan, in this case it doesn't make a difference. As I mentioned, Premiere will convert to mono. Legacy mode, we're not going to need that. We're using the latest version of Premiere. So, let's export. Uh, and that has all been exported. Let me just quit this. Now, before we go to the next step, let's go to that export folder. I find that if the AAF and the audio files are not in the same folder, you can really run into some problems. And that's not just Premiere, that's always. File management can get really, really messy if you're not very careful from the beginning. So at this stage of the game, try and put everything in one folder. And that is it. The next step is to open that AAF in Premiere and then put the whole thing together. And that's what we're gonna do in the next video.